Hello, everyone. Good afternoon. <laughs> How's it going? Um, so, the Pro Tips are live Facebook podcast. We haven't done one of these in a long time. So, uh, yeah, I hope you won't be annoyed that you're after getting some uh, notifications. I'm just going to play with my volume here now. I can hear that a bit better. Pro Tips to Martin. How's it going? Very well, Paddy. How are you? Yeah, I'm all right, man. I'm very good. It's uh, yeah, you know, I've been a little sick all week, but it's uh, it's nice. The snow is gone, more or less, and we're back to usual. Uh, there's a great weekend of football coming, isn't there? I'll tell you what, there's some decent games this weekend. Yeah, um, tonight's nice. going to be tasty if you're an Arsenal fan, but um, yeah, the weekend's going to be good as well. Some good. There's a lot of derbies this weekend. Yeah, that's it. They're calling it rival weekend, aren't they? On, on yeah, on, Sky Sports. Of course. Um. On tonight's uh, European matches, Martin, uh, is it all doom and gloom for Arsenal? Well, I don't know, you know, it depends on what lineup they put out. Obviously, like, they know that this is going to be the only competition, this is going to be the only chance they're going to get, win this competition to get Champions League football. Not going to get it mm. any other way. However, I, have I have it here if you want. Have you got it? Yeah. Oh, I might have to get that uh, retweet on EMG. Uh, Ospina, Chambers, Mustafi, Koscielny, Kolasinac, uh, Ramsey, Xhaka, Wilshere, uh, Ozil, Mkhitaryan and Welbeck. That's not, that's not a bad team. Yeah, you know what? It's probably the best team, bar Ospina and Czech, obviously, swapping up. But that might not be a bad thing, because Czech's been awful recently. But um, probably the best team they can put out. Um, <coughs> they've got a chance at anyone with an attacking prowess you know, of, uh, of Arsenal, I've, I've got a chance anywhere they go, but Milan are in great form. Yeah, that's the thing, it, yeah. It wouldn't surprise me if Milan sneaks a win, but I, I think it's all going to rest on the second leg. Uh, yeah, Milan, they have a very strong, uh, uh, use some, some football hipster terminology, a very strong kind of spine to the team now with Donnarumma and goal, Bonucci and um, uh, as a central defender and Kessie. Kessie's a great defensive midfielder. He's really hard working. I've not seen too much of him, to be honest. Uh, he's good. He's he's terrible going forward. Like he's <laughs> awful in possession. He you know he loses the ball. It's kind of like he gets to the halfway line and then just goes, "Oh no, what have I done?" <laughs> <laughs> you know. But uh, but he's great at breaking down uh, play and yeah. um, and uh, okay. So Suso is their normal attacking threat, but this new guy, Patrick, uh, what's his name, Crotoni. Oh, Catrone, C- sorry, say his name properly. He, yeah. He's been scoring a few goals lately. He he looks like he's a good prospect, so hopefully they'll keep the run going. But it's I, crazy I, how yeah, well they've done in the like, recent yeah. weeks. Like, completely turned it around, everything. It's mad, yeah, because it's like, you know yourself, like, moment, I, I was writing an article about about their match against Genoa this weekend, and we're saying mm-hmm. in that, that uh, you know, momentum is a, is, it's a mad thing in, in all sports. Momentum is a crazy thing because you come up against teams who you probably shouldn't be beaten, but because yeah. there's a belief and, and, and your team is playing as a, as a unit, uh, you're just able to do it. It's, it's mad. Um, uh, That's what I kind of, I, I kind of think, um, just, just sticking with the Europa League, but switching just based on what you just said, Dortmund versus Salzburg. I think Dortmund are really short and based on momentum, Salzburg are unbeaten in 30 games. Well, you know? it? Yeah. So right. I, I think, you know, there's a little bit of value in Salzburg there. And like you say, just it, you're right. Teams that you've got are, are on a bit of a run do go to certain places and get a victory or get a positive result when they really shouldn't. Yeah, there, there's another one I wrote actually about the... <laughs> you, you'll have noticed, Martin, that I, I, I kind of avoided a lot of the Europa League matches because I don't... <laughs> I don't I, it's not that I don't watch the Europa League. I, I hate trying to make predictions and stuff like that on Europa League because it's a mad competition. But the one I did write about was Sporting and... And Victoria uh, Pilsen, mm. the Czech side, and uh, the Czech side. I think they they've only lost. They've been in the Europa League now since August or something. They've only lost three games and all that. Uh, two of them were in the group stage. One was in the qualifying stage. I think. Yeah. And then, um, but to find a result where they've lost by more than a goal, you have to go back to. Oh God, I got. I think it was February of last year or something like that. That's crazy. It's a mental stat, isn't it? So, like, I was looking at them on the handicap, and you can get them, I think it was about minus 1.25, I think. I think the, only bad thing, <clears throat> the only bad thing for Pilsen is I don't think they've got enough quality to do, do no. damage, and Sporting are pretty much out of the title race now, so they're going to be wanting to win this competition. Um, yeah, that's the thing, but it's, 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 that's, that's why it's so hard to call, because, like, there's obviously a massive gulf in quality between the Portuguese league and the Czech Oh, 
you know, obviously. But, you know, then again, when you have such a defensive record as, you know, they just don't lose by more than two goals. So, I don't know, like, if I knew more about, about, about Czech football, uh, I, I would take that bet. But because I don't, I, I won't. <laughs> yeah, but just based you know, on the stats that you um, found out, maybe uh, it is worth going on pills and on the handicap, just based on what you, you know. Yeah, stats have, a look, have a look at just yourselves then at the stats and see what you think, because they'll, they'll definitely put out a strong team. Because, mm. uh, you know, they're, they're running away with the league. I think they're nine points ahead of the league with a game in hand or something like that, or so eight points ahead. So yeah. they're running away with the league. They they don't really care. So they've nothing to lose here. The Mays, but the Mays will just. I mean, if they get a nil nil or a one all, then they're happy as Larry. Or even yeah, if even if, even even if they lose two one, they have the away goal then. No. Yeah, it's true. And I kick off a couple of hours away. So after this, I will have a look into it because um, there's rumours flying around that Bastos might not play, and that's why Sporting nah. Lisbon's price is going up a little bit. So. <laughs> If he doesn't start, then it might be worth getting on him on the handicap. We didn't talk about the Champions League at all. Um, crazy uh, last night, wasn't it? It, it was a crazy not, five minutes. Where do you come down on this now? Because I've been listening to a ton of football uh, podcasts and radio today. And I could find that from, like, you either recorded last night or, or made this morning, made today. Yeah. And the camp, it, it's, it's very much split down the middle that uh, uh, Spurs just balls it up. Or, or Juve, Juve were just smarter and more experienced. I personally think Spurs balls it up. Yeah, um, yeah. I, I honestly think they they controlled. Um, they had a crazy ten minutes in the first leg when they obviously went two 0 down and potentially nearly went three 0 down, and then they they played really well and got it back to two all, and they dominated most of the game last night. And, and they had a crazy five or ten minutes. You know, obviously two goals in three or four minutes or something silly. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, they had a 10 minute spell where they just couldn't get anything going. And then they found their rhythm again. Obviously, Harry Kane hit the post late on. Um, I, I think, yeah, Spurs balls it up. But then again, there's a li- there was a little bit of Juventus Champions League experience coming out there. Um, which is something- this is the thing. I, I, I would actually be on the Juventus side here because I like Juventus anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so, I, you know, uh, I won't lie about that. Um, uh, but I think that something. Uh, Sean True for me last night and thinking about the match today at Pochettino he um, do you remember when Spurs went to Chelsea and they had that nightmare match where a couple of where just like nine of their players got yellow carded and uh, uh, what's his name the English ref that's gone off to Saudi Arabia Clattenburg he has come out since then and says look I didn't want Spurs to, to win anyone yeah, I, yeah. <laughs> I didn't want Spurs to win the league <laughs> I didn't want to send off anyone because if someone was sent off, then I was going to get the blame for Spurs not winning the league. And oh, sure. Spurs lost their heads. So that's that should have been a turning point for Pochettino where he should have said, right, lads, cop on. You need to learn from experiences. And I think last night it showed that while they're, they're a great team and, and you know Harry Kane has learned how to be a better footballer, mm. uh, Deli Ali is trying his best to learn how to dive. Uh, Moussa Dembele has learned to be a great footballer. Christian Eriksen has improved. Eric Dyer's yeah. improved. The, the whole lot of them have improved, in fairness. But not mentally. No, I agree. Um, it's got to come down to the manager as well, isn't it, really? Yeah, exactly. I don't, know, I don't know whether he's got that in his, in his tank to, to sort them out next season. Because it, for me, if, they don't, if, they, if it goes the same way again next season for them, then you know, they could be losing stars like Kane and Ali. They could be going elsewhere yeah. and then They'll be back to square one, which is I think I hope that happens. But there was a tweet from Oily Sailor, the 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 chap who runs the up to up to Twitter account. He was saying that uh, Pochettino. uh, It it was after Pochettino's interview. He said Pochettino's interview there. um, Ah, what was it? Have to paraphrase. Pochettino's interview there, delivered by a man who knows that he'll be managing Cristiano Ronaldo and Eden Hazard next year. Uh, uh, <laughs> I thought it was very good. Um, the Basel-Man City match. Um, I mean, I didn't watch much of that match, to be honest. Obviously, Basel got the win, but it was Man City reserves, really, wasn't it? And they didn't really care. They were through. Um, it probably busted a few coupons. <laughs> I imagine so, yeah. Um, it was something where I heard some people on, on radio and that saying that the Man City team was quite strong. It wasn't very strong. No. <laughs> I don't know where they're getting that from. Sure, I mean, what are they doing with Yaya Toure still in the team? He's going around there with a Zimmer frame. 
It was yeah. about 45, yeah. Grandpa Simpson, <laughs> mole man of the Simpsons. Anyway, look, that's football gone uh, this weekend. Where do you want to start? Do you want to start on Friday night? Oh, we're just going to... Yeah, you go start Friday night. What have we got Friday night? Uh, the, I had... Where Syria is probably the biggest on Roma and Torino. It's not that big though, really, is it? No. No, no not really. Um, no, not too much Friday night, really, is it? That. And from Saturday then, from the Premier League or the Championship, that you like the look of? Obviously, you've got United, Liverpool, the early kickoff. Uh, that is the big one. Um, Liverpool lost more games to United than anyone else in the league in their history. Um, and it's going to be an entertaining game, but I can't. I can't see many goals. I know, like you know, Liverpool free flowing going forward, and um, United's defence, bar David de Gea, is a bit suspect at times, but. You know, the last two of the last three have been nil nil between the two sides, and the other two, you know, all last four have been draws. The other two have been one all. So I can't see many goals in this, to be honest. But I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna look forward to watching it. Are you are you nervous about it or being a Liverpool fan? Or uh, I don't get nervous about football games, man. Unless Ireland playing, maybe just it couldn't doesn't bother me. Um, I suppose if I was still living at home in Ireland, I would because. Uh, Ireland has a lot of Man United fans, glory hunters, yeah. and yeah, they'd be slagging him. But like, whatever, it's only a football match, you know. <laughs> but yeah, I'm, I'm too, like, like Man United are two point, they're almost two point seven. Mm. Liverpool are almost two point seven, so it's very even. Uh, yeah, you'd have to be going for a draw, wouldn't you? Yeah, I can't, I can't call it. I'd go for a draw. A little bit of value in the draw. Um, it's. I can't, yeah, I can't see United or, or Liverpool running away a bit. So yeah, I always find that these these ones interesting because you know from you know, pro tips to Johnny uh, mm-hmm. on our podcast, he was always going against the markets, and this is the type of game where you go against the market because the um, let me just check. I presume the odds for over two point five are one point six, one point seven, and that's because so many people who don't bet very often bet on big games like this. Yeah. Where, oh no, it's not. It's one point nine. Oh. Higher than I thought it would be. I'd imagine it would have been much lower. I wonder what did it open at? Uh, I won't be able to... I might have oh, maybe a cheeky both teams to score one all draw or something like that. We don't offer it on Pro Tipster, but I think uh, might have a few pennies on a correct score. Maybe a one all, something like that. Uh, all right, and that's... Um, yeah, it's a couple of games. I just want to say Lukaku's on 99 Premier League goals, so he only, you know, he's joining the 100 club potentially this weekend. Um, and... Random stat, last time Liverpool made the quarterfinals of the Champions League uh, it was back in 2009. And that same weekend, they qualified for the quarterfinals. They went to Old Trafford and won 4-1. Oh, I remember that match. <laughs> <laughs> That's the one when Stevie, Steven Gerrard kissed the camera, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah it was actually. Yeah, That's yeah. it. I remember that one. Playing the great kit or, or something. But, um, yeah, I, get, obviously West Ham are playing against Burnley. That is a huge game. I know a lot of neutrals probably won't care about the game, but for me, it's an absolute must win. And I I think we'll win it. Um, Burnley are good defensively, but it's an absolute must win for us because, you know, we've got Southampton after this and then and then we're playing the big boys. You know, we've still got to play Chelsea, Arsenal, Man City next month. Um, so if we don't get anything in the next two games, we're, we're in big, big trouble. Um and Declan Rice just been called up for the Ireland squad. Did you see that? I did, yeah. I saw that today. Declan Rice made it. Um, Matt Doherty from Wolves is there as well. And um, Scott Hogan from Aston Villa. Oh, nice. Yeah, I was happy with that. Uh, Hogan, I think Hogan's okay. He doesn't score enough, but that's a typical of an Irish footballer, in fairness. Yeah, he's Sean... quite, quite injury-prone as well, I think. Yeah. Shawnee Maguire's just back, and he's scoring goals for Preston. So he, I, I'm pretty sure he'll get the nod, in fairness. But like, yeah, yeah. Chengis under for Turkey. He's just going to rip Ireland apart. <laughs> oh, he probably will. <laughs> hopefully, hopefully he'll play him because he'll need a rest or something. I, I don't know. <laughs> but um, hey, no, there's, a, there's an interesting one. Though. I haven't looked into the stats, right? but for me, uh, Newcastle, Southampton, I think that's, that's a proper six-pointer. Uh, oh, yeah, it is a six-pointer, isn't it? I've not, yeah, I've not personally looked into the stats behind it, but um, Southampton can't score at a minute and Newcastle aren't great at the minute. So, it wouldn't surprise me if it was nil-nil. But, oh, but from my point of view, um, being a West Ham fan, I'm, I could do with it being a draw. Um, yeah. the, 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 the bookies can't separate them, so the draw would probably be the best thing to go yeah, on there. Yeah, so the Newcastle are 
barely favourites. There's only 10, 12 points in it in the difference. Uh, yeah. And in the championship, Martin? Uh, you've got a little bit of a Midlands derby, Aston Villa v Wolves. Uh, that's at half five on Saturday, um, UK time. That That is a massive game. I mean, Wolves are pretty much promoted anyway, but um, if they win against Villa, obviously they can't really be caught. They, you know, they can get caught by Cardiff, but they're pretty much up if they win this weekend. Yeah, um, they, had a, they had a good win last night against their Leeds. 3-0 away. Yeah, very, very impressive. Um, and Leeds come out and said, you know, it's ridiculous. What are they doing in the championships? Like the best championship scene they've ever seen. Um, <laughs> you can't really disagree with it. And I think 2.4 on a Wolves win is, um, you know, they're not they're not above evens very often. So it might be worth having a little bit of a dabble there. Yeah, they were just, they were, I had them this day, 1.98, I got them at. Oh, nice. I left it a little bit too. I know that's after timing, but I can show you the, I can show you the bed slip if you want. <laughs> um, what else is there? Uh, Cardiff are bad odds. They're taking on Dan's Birmingham. They're only 1.6, so. Yeah, sadly for Dan, I think they're going to get absolutely battered. Um, I've, my two tips, oh, you've frozen. Hope you haven't gone. Might have lost you there, Paddy. Oh, no, you're back. You froze for a minute. Oh. Yeah, you froze as well. It was a great yeah, yeah. Random. Uh, but no, um, my two tips for this weekend, actually, are both even shots. And it's QPR to beat Sunderland. Um, I think it's pretty good value. And also Bradford to beat MK Dons. So that would be my two. Nothing really else sticks out massively for me on Saturday in terms of amazing games to look forward to. But those two are pretty good value, um, just looking down the leagues. And then, have we got anything in Europe on a Saturday? Um, uh, is Seville, I had I wrote about Seville and Valencia. Is that Saturday or Sunday? I think that might be Saturday. Saturday. Yeah, quarter past three. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Um, what did I have here? I'm just looking through what I wrote. You read so many articles now, you kind of forget. Um, <laughs> yeah, no, it will Seville to win because uh, I, uh, I, I, you don't really tip them in the article, but if I was tipping them, I'd go with because the, the handicap line has moved from 0.25 to 0.5, uh, suggesting that the market fancies Seville uh, here to win. And, yeah, uh, yeah. yeah, I'd have to go with that as well. Just looking at their home form because uh, where are we here? Oh, uh, yes, yeah, so they've won six at home, drawn two, lost two, uh, over 2.5 and four out of 10. Both teams have scored five out of 10. Mm. And they scored, this is what kind of clinched for me. They've scored um, more than 1.5 goals and seven out of 10. And they've kept, kept um, uh, five out of 10 clean sheets as well. So, uh, and look, Valencia, even though there's a good bit, there's a, there's a gap now of, I think, is it five points? Eight points ahead of them. And they're in of the Champions League spots in the La Liga table at the minute. So, Seville, the one worry for this match, though, is that it's like Seville are obviously going to be thinking about Man United next week. But like, they must know deep down that they're not going to beat Man United. They're not going to beat a Jose Mourinho team at all. I don't, I don't know. It's one of those. All they need to do is get a goal and then... I know, but it's easier said than done at all, Trapper. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it's kind of like the, the, the way the, the way I see this is that the manager has a massive dilemma now. It's like, right, do we do we go do we go hell for leather now and try and catch up with Valencia, which they c- could do if everything goes their way, and and, and Valencia drop uh, points here and there, mm-hmm. um, which everyone does, you know, uh, Seville probably will as well, or else do they just just say, you know what? Nah, this game, let's just play reserves and, and try to beat Man United. Because I don't know. I don't think the fans will want to see that. But have they, have they got the strength in depth to play a load of reserves against Valencia? And no, probably not. You know, so let's, yeah, I don't think they have. Um, I, I think I think they will have to go for it because, like, whatever he does, they're the most demanding fans in, in European football that I can think of. They're awful. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> They're so mean to their own football team. <laughs> and, and, like, whatever he does, he's going to get it wrong. That's how demanding yeah, they are. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, so, um, yeah. But, but, I, but uh, yeah, I, I would go for them to win here. Yeah, I, I reckon they go all out. I mean, they're probably looking at who United are playing. And I think United have got a tougher fixture. Um, That's true. Yeah. And, but, yeah, and we've, I don't know. It's, it's a tough one. I think, I think they can potentially do Valencia. And then, 
I'm, I'm interested to see what they do at Old Trafford um, in the second leg as well, because they can nick a goal from a set piece. Then I don't know if United have got it got it in them to turn it around. So that'd be interesting. Yeah, so as United's the, 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 the players in United's team would be inexperienced at stuff like that, you know. Whereas mm. Seville, Seville have a lot of experience in the European stage, I suppose. Uh, yeah, whereas United, in European oh, competitions. It's, it's, it's Mourinho. You know? Yeah, I know what you're saying. I really wouldn't be surprised if Mourinho wins the wins the Champions League this season. I really would not be really? surprised. No, I wouldn't, man. You I know, think out of the if I had to pick an English club to win the Champions League, I'd I'd like Man City to win it. Yeah. But um, another thing that sticks out for me is Malaga Barcelona. I don't know if you've looked at that game yet, but obviously Malaga are terrible, um, and Barcelona are very very short. However, Malaga won the games. You know that fixture two 0 last season, and they're just the most recent fixtures between the two sides. are just not a lot of goals. Um, I think overs in just one of the last seven meetings between the two sides. So I think Malaga on the handicap could be worth uh, worth a few pennies. I don't know what the line is actually, but I think it's absolutely I think it's absolutely ridiculous. Let's have a quick look. Um, it's Saturday, Saturday night, isn't it? Yeah, Saturday night. Yeah, yeah got it here. And the line is 1.75. Uh, um, I still have to win by three goals for you to get all your money. Yeah. Uh, so, <laughs> that's what I mean. Maybe, maybe go with Malaga. Yeah, yeah. that's what I'd be. There, yeah. So Barcelona's winning by three goals. It's, yeah, it's, it's not a foregone conclusion, by the way. There's a lot to be said for going against the market. I have a the, the, Professor Johnny gave me a good website, AsianOdds.com, and then I've been okay. using another website called. Uh, let me just find it. My bookmarks. Uh, bookmarks. Uh, where is it? Oh, odds. Oddsmath.com. So, what I like about that one is. You can see the opening um, odds for uh, games. So if you go into something that you like to look at, say, let me let me do it here for you then, right? So Malaga, let me get uh, Malaga Barcelona, and, and then I'll always check on. Uh, one problem is they won't have that Asian handicap line, but I'll give you the closest that they have. Yeah. Uh, closest that they have will only be half. But anyway, you you, you get what I mean. Um, I won't because that's a bad example. Ah, <laughs> Pinnacle haven't opened yet. Where's Pinnacle? They have. Okay. So uh, what I'll do is I'll just the normal odds then we'll say right. So Barcelona are one point two seven, but their opening odds on Pinnacle are were one point three one. Now it doesn't sound like much of a difference, but Pinnacle mm. kind of offer the truest odds, don't they? Because they have the smallest, they have the smallest margin of all the bookies. So, if you see that, like on, on an Asian handicap, like that, that something is going up or going down, uh, you can quickly see what the market thinks is going to happen. And then when you factor in that, like, oh, it's Barcelona, people just bet on that because it's Barcelona. Then you can go against that and kind of be a little bit smarter that way. Let me see if I can get it on, on the other one as well, on the Asian odds one. I mean, it's pretty interesting logic, actually. Uh, <clears throat> well, that doesn't mean it'll work, of course. It's still gambling. <laughs> well, yeah, <I'm> <laughs> uh, come on, man. Where is this? No. Mm, what else we got on the weekend? <clears throat> this is after. Um, yeah, nothing else really sticks out for me on the weekend. Um, potentially Coventry to be Barnet. Oh, yeah. What was your MK Dons one? Uh, basically, my MK Dons one was for Bradford to beat them um, at evens. And I've just had a look at Coventry's price to beat Barnet as well as evens. So, it might, in the lower leagues in, in England, there's a little bit of value this weekend. Just having a look. Um, because Barnet are terrible. I think they're about four points adrift um, of safety and struggling big time. 
Okay, I have it. So on the oh. Asian odds, the, 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 it opened at two, right? So that means it's gone down to one point seven five. Yeah. Which means actually that the market is thinking the same as you, then, Martin. That Malaga would be would be the safer one here. Yeah, slightly. Interesting. So that's I, I think it's a good way of looking at stuff to see. You get a better idea of how well, what the market is doing. You know. Hmm. Because you know, so many people they just go and they just pick, they just see the odds and just go, oh yeah, that looks alright. But if you dig it a bit deeper and see how it's moved in the last couple of days, yeah, yeah. You know, you get a better idea. Um, I'm I'm done there, man. Unless you've had to say, there's, yeah, there's, a big, there's, a big, there's a big match on Sunday night. Uh, Inter are playing Napoli. Um, I think it looks good. Uh, Napoli, it, Inter, Inter have won sixty four times in this meeting. Wow. Nap- or have only won 39. Uh, it's tough Nap- because Nap- Napoli needs to win it, don't they, really? Otherwise, the league's over. Yeah, with a game in hand, or Juventus have a game in hand now as well. Mm. And it's like they really screwed up against against uh, Roma. They, okay, they had to win the match against Roma, but they, they yeah. shouldn't have lost like, in the way they lost. And the problem with them is that they're a bit like, um, a bit like Brendan Rodgers at Liverpool, or Klopp's Liverpool you know, from, from a year ago as well as that. Yeah. You know, no plan B. It's just like right. We have to outscore people. We have to outscore people. And then when when people when when teams that are tactically smarter than them come up against them, they they don't know what to do. So they 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 have a lot to learn o- over the last week. And hopefully hopefully they have because everyone wants to see them win. Yeah, we, we, we all do. Yeah, yeah. It's not going to happen though. Sadly, you've had what got Udinese this weekend. Easy win. Yeah, they got yeah. they got lucky against Lazio to be fair. But that's what you need when you win in titles. Uh, 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 exactly. Yeah. But one big game on Sunday, uh, which we haven't mentioned, is Rangers versus Celtic. Oh, Rangers are the set. Are Rangers the favourites here for the first time in years, aren't they? No, of course they're not. Aren't they not? No, definitely not. I think that you know they're, it, it's closer in terms of betting. I don't think they're favourites. Let me have a look. I thought someone said that to me the other day. Oh, they were lying. I think. Yeah, no, they're not favourites. No, you're um, that. However, you know, Rangers have improved in recent weeks. Um, and if they beat Celtic, there'll be three points behind them. Can you imagine Rangers winning the league? <laughs> oh, Brendan Rogers must be feeling the pressure. I think so, yeah, because everyone thinks, like, anyone that doesn't really follow Scottish football probably just thinks that Celtic are 10, 15 points clear already and have won yeah. the league, and they haven't. So this is a huge game. If Rangers could nick something, if they get a win, it could be big. Oh, yeah, you no, know, the odds are way out. What would, I don't know. Someone was lying to me then. <laughs> Celtic are about evens. Oh, wow. Yeah. Someone is really low. There's 1.88 on some of them. God, that's way low. Yeah, oh, around evens. And, uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, that'd be tasty. What time is it? It's Sunday, Sunday dinner time, 1 o'clock. Nice. Yeah, and then you've got, you got another derby. You've got Forest versus Derby County. Um, that'd be a big game. They hate each other, don't they? So that'd be a good one to watch. Um, I did write something down for that game. What did I write down? Um, Jeremy Simpson is the referee for this game, and he's dished out 137 yellow cards and five red cards in 33 games. <laughs> Better make myself look busy. You know? <laughs> you so, wanna... yeah, you can, you can guarantee someone's probably getting sent off uh, this weekend. <laughs> Right, Martin, uh, where can we find you on the internet? You can find me on Twitter at ProTips.eng and on Facebook at ProTips and Martin, three separate words. Uh, come and say hi. Um, I'm always available. I always get pings on my phone. So happy to talk morning, noon or night. And you can get me at uh, ProTips the Pod on Twitter and uh, ProTips the Paddy on Facebook. Or you know, you can get in touch with myself, Martin, Protester Dan through the Protester UK page on Facebook. Uh, we'll be back on Monday then with another uh, audio podcast. Uh, we just felt like doing this one. Why not? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> hope you like it. I'll put this out on YouTube and uh, iTunes later anyway. So, uh, yeah, good luck and uh, enjoy whatever sports you watch this weekend. And we sincerely hope you make a few bob. I hope <laughs> I make a few bob. <laughs> good luck. See you later. Uh, this is the bit where it's supposed it to It always start. does it. We're always live for a few seconds afterwards before it goes off. <laughs> IP server could not be found. Yeah.
Brilliant. Uh, oh, this bloody software. I'm so glad I didn't pay for it. <laughs> uh, it's still going. Hello. It's still going. Uh, <laughs> Let me see if I can find uh, another. Everybody, everybody, 